United Ways have changed what they are doing and how they are doing it. This is not your granddaddy's United Way. Stay with us and find out. Programming is supported by NIPSCO. Today's young minds are constantly reimagining what our world will be like tomorrow. That's why NIPSCO is upgrading its infrastructure now, so we're ready for whatever comes next. More information at nipsco.com slash future. Welcome again to Lakeshore Focus, a weekly show highlighting the key issues, important events, and interesting people in our region. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick. The United Ways of both Lake and Porter County have changed leadership in the past year or so. They have also changed what they do and how they do it. To give us an update on their worlds, we have with us Kim Olesker, who is the president and CEO of the United Way of Porter County, and Lisa Darty also a president and CEO, except she is with Lake Area United Way. Glad to have you guys here. Thank you, Keith. Thanks Thank for you having us. And actually, I was looking back. I had you on the show about a year and a half ago or a year and something like that when you had just kind of taken this job. I was brand job. new, yes. But our subject, so you know, was not about the United Way. It was about career changes because mm -hmm. oh, you had right. been through some career changes. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get a chance to really talk about United Way. Uh, but today we do. Mm -hmm. And you've been in your role how long, Kim? Since January. Since January. It's the time flies. It sure time, does. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the two of you working together all the time now? All yeah, the time. A lot, yeah. 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 So you guys actually followed two kind of iconic leaders in our region. I mean, both have been with the United Ways for many years. Lou was with the United Way, like his yeah, whole that, career. In, in that role alone, he was in it for about 20 years. Yeah. I think he was with Lake Area for 30 years or more. Yeah, so that was Lou Martinez. Yes. Right. And then you had Sharon. Kish, correct. Kish, and she was there for... 15 years. 15 years. 15 years. So what, what is it like to kind of follow in the footsteps of somebody who's like left big footprints in the sand or something? Well, it, you know, on one hand, it's it's pretty easy because uh, there's a lot of, you know, brand recognition uh, with United Way. Uh, in some ways, it's a little more challenging. Um, United Way in general has uh, been making some transitions. Uh, so we're leading a change, a new path. Um, but I'd say overall, it's been a great experience for me personally. That's what I want to talk about, some of these transitions, but you followed in some big footsteps, too. Big footsteps. Not that Sharon had big feet or anything. Sure, we actually had big. the same size foot, so okay, that was so, very fortunate. So when you sit at the desk, you're like, hey, my hey, footprints just fit right here at the yeah, desk. Yeah, it must have been a qualifier. Probably a little different with Lou, though, right? Right. Uh, well, I hope so. I've got big feet, though. I do. So what was it like to follow after Sharon? Well, I think it really um, speaks to the ability to transition because I had experience with the board and with the community in the past so at least we had that comfortable you know thing going but it really was about the transition and about making sure that everybody knew that she was leaving it in good hands because she has quite a following but also making sure that I that you know that I don't shoot out of the box making all these transitions making everybody nervous so it's just all in the transition I think and I think we we handled it very beautifully in January so um, so I'm fortunate that she left it the way she left it and the staff that staff is there that really had learned a lot from her and are ready for the next wave. So Kim, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but, uh, but I'm going to say this, tell me if you agree. Okay. The thing about United Way is that it is very much a community organization. It's so true. it's really Absolutely not even true. about any one of us. Right. Uh, it's, there are so many volunteers, so many people committed, we're entrenched in the community. So it's really a community organization. It's true. You, you know, I, I, you guys know I love talking about the leadership issues. Right. So both uh, with Lou and Sharon in these jobs, and you guys stepped into these roles. And I, I remember when you first joined it, you were so excited about doing this. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to you actually when you were I was still in the interview in process, right. mm -hmm. and you were like, "Oh, I might get this job. I hope <laughs> I get this job." And you were both so you were both so excited about it. And it's it's so neat to see when we do turn over that leadership and we hand it to really capable leaders in our region. So um, that's a compliment to both of Thank you. you. So, Thank you. But Lisa, you started off and said, you know, we're doing things a little bit differently today. So that was kind of the shape of the show a little bit. What's going on with the United Way? Maybe people need to kind of remember the old model particularly was. So, you know, most people know the traditional model of United Way it really functions as a fundraising 
organization. You know, we go out into the community, always with volunteers, uh, raise a significant amount of money uh, through workplace campaigns primarily, and then uh, through a group of volunteers, uh, decide where those monies should be distributed amongst uh, partner agencies. And, and, that, and that model's been going on for... Since its yeah, inception. Since inception, you're right. Because right, these should be the old community chest, which exactly was... Exactly yes. right. And mm -hmm. the concept was great. Hey, we're the community chest. People put Come money in the community us. chest, mm -hmm. and then we give it back out to the right. community. But this, the United Way has really gone through some challenges mm -hmm. in the past 10, 15, 20 years, and where it's like, mm, this is not working as well. Why isn't it not working as well as it had? I think a lot of it has to do with treating the symptom versus treating the problem. So we, I think we've, we're, as a nation, I think it's really easy to treat the symptom. Somebody is hungry, let's give them food. Somebody is, needs a house, let's put a roof over their head. All very important stuff. But we don't transition that person into being able to raise that bar for themselves and making that helping that family get to that level of stability or security. So I think it all came about with that focus on impact where you are measuring and you're you're qualifying and you're getting those folks out of that air out of whatever issues they're having, whether it's health, education or financial stability, into that level where they can succeed. So Maybe it's job training. Maybe it's a transitional housing so that it can get some stability for families. But I really think it all has to do with being able to treat the the problem and not just the symptoms. You know, they speak about the yep. ogre story yep. and your root, root and causes. Your, right, root causes. It's so important. But, but this is almost like a second generation recognition because the first recognition, it seems to me, if yeah. I can remember back, maybe we're jumping back 15, 20 years, you know, United Ways were following that model that you guys talked about, just kind of handing money mm -hmm. out. And and I think there was some feeling like we're just giving money out, and I'm not sure what these organizations are really doing with it, uh, how it's impacting our community as at the level it should. Is that was that part of it? Do you think? Yeah. Well, certainly, you know, in that description of the model, we were a middleman, and right. that role just isn't relevant anymore. At one point in time, it was because people weren't as savvy as they are today uh, about you know charitable organizations. Now they are more savvy, particularly mm -hmm. about their causes. You're right, because I would With, give you my money, right? and we, I trust that you, you know who to give and, it to. And, and we still go through a, an extreme vetting process, I shouldn't use that we term, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, process where we really understand the organizations mm -hmm. and how they're you know, supporting those programs. And hold them accountable, yes. if, they, if they're not. If you something bet. changes in their leadership, yep. they're required. and they're not doing a service or program that we've agreed to fund them on, you know, that's all part of it. Why don't you, you want, want to, to use the word vetting? <laughs> well, extreme vet. I mean, you know, I want need to stay away from political, <laughs> political terms. terms right oh, now. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, we're, You're we're a right. neutral, unbiased organization. <laughs> yeah. You know, and there's a lot uh, of vetting going on outside of our <laughs> organization. Uh, uh, the other thing, uh, you know, technology has changed our world quite a bit. Uh, with just a few clicks uh, in a mobile device, which everybody has, you know, people can donate uh, to their own cause. So again, they're not relying on United Way uh, in the way that they used to. Uh, Are the campaigns gone at this point? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. I actually know. The, 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 the <laughs> workplace yeah. campaign. But I love the reaction on your yeah. faces. Well, because I actually had this yeah. uh, conversation with my staff because uh, I felt when I came in and started learning more about United Way, it seemed that there was this um, belief that the workplace campaign was going away. And it, you know, it's not that it's going away. Workplaces, you know, they're just not um, engaging with United Way the same uh, way that they used to. We used to have closed campaigns where it was just United Way that went into these mm -hmm. organizations. And we may have been the only charitable organization that they supported, but just like people, organizations want to align their charitable giving uh, with their issues, mm -hmm. you know, like obviously with NIPSCO, you know, the environment is particularly important to them. Uh, supporting STEM, mm -hmm. uh, you know, research education is very important to them, and so they're, they're looking for different alignment. Think about, our, think about our top employers in this area. Uh, they were much larger organizations in terms of the number of employees that they had, but with, you know, advances, innovation, automation, uh, they're not the same organizations. Well, you know, the, interesting, you're, you triggered a thought in me that I never considered before. When you're working with employers, particularly 
people like say in manufacturing or people mm -hmm. who are like locked to their business. I mean, you show up at work, you were there all day and you were really focused mm -hmm. on your job. You don't have time to think about what's going on in the community and all those right. kind of things. You actually need, if you're gonna be benevolent, if you're gonna be charitable, you need an organization where you say, I don't have time to do this, I'm busy manufacturing our product, Could, but I wanna support our community. So right. I'm gonna give it to you, Kim, and let you do and something with it. Steward. So has that been mm -hmm. the focus to kind of work with those type of organizations? Well, we're still working with a variety yeah. of organizations. They just may have more than one option uh, okay. for employees. Uh, you know, they may have their own foundation, mm -hmm. as an example, that they may want to direct. But the, the workplace campaign is still an absolutely amazing uh, fundraising you know, mechanism. Why do you think it's so important? I think it's important for, for everybody that's in the workforce to have that opportunity to support the community. And that's the great thing about the United Way is 99.5% stays right in your county. And we do go by counties because that's the way United Way is structured, but we're the only ones who can say that. Uh, there's a few, there's a handful of other ones that could say that, but honestly, 99.5% stays right here. So when you're a community member working in a plant or working on an assembly line or working in the hospital or even Best Buy or Target or any of the other great boxes out there, you're, you're part of the community, but when you give to United Way, you're supporting a, a big net of services. So for Porter County, you're, su you're supporting directly 38 agencies, 50 partners, Lake Area has their own number. You could, I don't know, I don't know if you count them anymore. Some, yep. some United Ways have gone away from that. Programs. Programs. Okay. So they count theirs by programs. We count ours by agencies still. But it's, it's, it's when somebody comes to you, you can say, I already support them because I give one check to United Way, and that goes out in the community. So to give our viewers a perspective, how big is your campaign? Like the last couple of years, what size is it? Uh, just been? under four million. Okay. Ours is just under two million. Okay. So. That's the, the numbers we're talking about. So right. let's let so you've got this four million, two million dollars, six million dollars together. That's quite that's, a bit of money. That's a lot of money. So now you're talking about what are the strategies that you're looking at? So you're trying to figure out what the cause is. What's changing? Instead of just handing the money out to these agencies, what are you doing differently? Well, we're we're revamping in in a in a really And big you both way. are doing something a little right. different. Right. We're both yes. doing different. So okay. mm -hmm. So we made the decision, and when I say we, I'm talking about the board, uh, and this was actually, this decision was made prior to my arrival. Uh, the board made uh, the decision to move toward an issue focus. Kim talked about a focus on root causes. We knew that's the direction that we wanted to go in. We did comprehensive research. We went out into the community. Uh, we met with hundreds of residents so that we could identify what their concerns were, their aspirations, who they thought should work on these issues. Uh, we uh, took all of the research that already existed about Lake County, uh, you know, quality of life indicators report, U.S. Census Bureau data, Department of Education. You know, we met with economic development leaders. And what did you decide? We took all of that information and ultimately landed on the issue of struggling working families because these folks, uh, they're working, so they're not, they're living above po that poverty line. Because they're above poverty, they're not eligible for a lot of the public assistance that exists uh, for families that are in crises. And our so, research says that we have an almost disproportionate number of those people in this region, more than a lot of other places, right? One in four. Now that doesn't include the 16% in Lake County that are in poverty. So it's a, we have a significant number of families uh, that are in some sort of crises. So instead of use, how we used to have kind of the, the bell-shaped curve with this huge middle class, we've got a fairly substantial kind of lower middle class or upper lower class. And it's growing, right, and there. it's growing. And that's the big part. So that's the focus that you guys are taking. Correct. So what focus have you guys kind of changed toward? So yeah. we participated in, uh, in the same kind of community outreach to figure out what our community in Porter County wanted as a sing if, if we could figure out a single issue that would bubble up. And this is all part of this Harwood conversation model where you go out into the community, you meet them where they're at, and they're in their place of worship or in their office or in their break rooms, and you sit down with a small group and you have a table conversation about what 
what aspirations do you have for your community? And in Porter County, what the resounding support was, that, that, that this group of 63 different conversations said was um, strengthening the family. So that looks differently in Porter than it does in Lake, but that's not to say that we're not also, we are also, it's really a whole system support because when you talk about strengthening the families, most of these conversations said that they needed help with like parenting, you know, how to talk to your child, how do you talk to your teen, how to, what do you do with, what do you, you know, they're missing basic skills on how to, how to parent sometimes and the parents are not, sometimes not the parents, sometimes it's the grandparents parenting. So it's being able to provide that support, whether it's financial or education or job training or financial stability or whatever that is. So for us, we still separate those out. United Way Worldwide has three initiatives, health, education, and income stability. And what that means is that we support and we have goals within each of those buckets still that remain as our community impact. So when we fund a program, it has to meet those criteria. It has to fall into one of those categories, but they have to be able to have achievable outcomes and measurable outcomes within that. So, One of the things I've noticed about Porter County mm -hmm. United Way is that you guys are also, and, and I guess just generally from the old strategy of just collecting money and making decisions about how to give it out, you guys are spending a lot of time doing resource development and engagement with issues in the community mm -hmm. and like getting people to volunteer and yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So is that, are you following that same kind of model? Yeah, we're, you know, it's our intention actually to to take a much more uh, data-driven, deliberate um, leadership role around our issue. Uh, you know, volunteerism is always gonna, mobilizing people is always gonna be a, a critical um, strategy for us. But to get at the root causes, you know, that, that put struggling working families, you know, in a challenging situation, um, we feel that there's a little more deliberate approach and we intend to take the lead on convening various partners. Uh, we have an initiative right now called United for Families Network where we are going to create a shared database. database. We're gonna network all of the information with our partners at the table so that we understand whether it's in Crown Point, you know, it's a church ministry in Crown Point that's offering support to a family, uh, or it's an organization in East Chicago that's providing support to their families. We're gonna have all of that data in a shared uh, place so that we can make, you know, informed uh, strategic, strategic decisions about where there may be gaps or what strategies would help you know, so, so an you entire are, population as opposed to thinking about it in terms of individual families that, right. that we can be helping. So you guys are taking, in some ways, kind of an advocacy role and, and really a, a deliberate leadership mm -hmm. roles on this you specific bet. issue. You bet. Uh, and your issue is, to some extent, a little more specific than, than yours is a little broader. Right. So what's neat about this is you're both saying we're really looking at our communities and what we've got to see what we need that's different. Yep. So, but you're still kind of generally trying to say, we're trying to generate a lot of resources yeah. for the community as a we whole. Are. We are, and, and our communities are very different. We, we're, we serve a population of 145,000. Lake has a lot more than that. Five, five, five. They've it's got just under 500,000, yeah. 13 or 16 school districts, we have seven. I mean, it's just night and day between the counties. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing about United Way is when you have a United Way in your county, mm -hmm. you can truly serve your county. Now, even in Porter, you know, you've got the, the people at the lake that have a different um, economic standpoint than the south part of the county or the or the parts to the west of our county. So even within our county, we have a, a large footprint with very different impressions of what who needs what. Our Portage school system, they're hovering at like 76% free and reduced lunch rate, which is an indicator of poverty. And yet Valparaiso school districts don't usually qualify. So parts of them do. Some schools within the district do. But as a whole, the district is not serving that, that population. So they're very different needs and we're able to answer those needs. So for us, we're supporting it in different ways because our, our county is so vastly different. We don't have one big municipal city. Not that Lake does, but it seems to just outgrow from the from the area there but um, we're able to answer those needs specifically let, 
let me argue with you both okay. a little bit about this. Because in, in some ways, I, I, I understand what you're saying, they're mm -hmm. very different. But we're still this one region, and a lot of these people are crossing over, and many of the people who, who live mm -hmm. in that same Absolutely. situation have moved to Porter and vice versa, and so they work in the same places. Uh, so, I mean, where do you see the similarities in the region? Similarities is basically that, uh, that population, that struggling working families. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a similarity we, we that both have, we I both think agree we with. We have a few more families than Porter County does. Right. We have more families that are in poverty right. uh, than, than what Porter County does. Um, By sheer but there number, are similarities. Yeah. We've got struggling families. You know, when a family's working, they, they, should, uh, they should have safe, affordable housing. They should have access to that. There's not enough of that. Uh, they should have reliable transportation, which you need to get across both the counties. The state lines and, and to work. both counties have yeah. the same problem. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. So you yes, need, you need quality child care so that you can go to work and not worry about your child being So this is the commonality. Yes. So there are sure. a lot without, of common. Without question. Right. There, there's a lot of commonalities. And there's a, there's a lot of need in that middle bracket that we're answering through our through our three initiatives. So when we say financial stability, for example, we want to make sure that these families have the opportunity for maybe better credit or to access our FAFSA Fridays, where we're we're helping families that are want to put their children in better higher education, they, so that they know what they're qualifying for for financial aid of any kind. That's not we have it out there in different realms and different renditions throughout all of the counties, but we're offering that so that we can provide financial stability. So if a family could send their child to a higher education opportunity at a good, with, with some decent help from the government or some scholarships through financial aid, then the, the, the family is more stable. And then you have another, another generation of folks that are out there that might be a better earner next year or next, you know, within the next generation or within the next four years. So obviously this, pro this it's issue is very complex, mm -hmm. very cyclical. Right. Uh, gosh, we have blown through our whole time. I can't believe this. So <laughs> what I guess I, in the last minute, would like each of you to ma make a pitch is why should people be giving money to the United Way? Why should they be giving money to this organization? Well, without question, we represent the community. Um, our network is vast. Uh, we, we don't just raise funds, but we are building the capacity of those agencies that are providing services to families. And we are taking a strategic approach that will uh, lead to meaningful, sustainable change. What's your pitch? I agree with everything that she just said, and we're doing the same thing. I would add, that when we, when we pro provide funding to a program, that program has to have outcomes. So if you're giving us $100 a year, you know that that $100 a year is going towards a person or a program or a project that has outcomes. It's not going towards that club or that agency's toilet paper or utility or donuts which can happen when you just give it to them directly. And, and that, that it's all very important, but when you, t when you give the money to us, we support that actual program or, or person. I appreciate your leadership. I appreciate you guys working together. And I know you're doing great stuff because we've got some challenges here and you guys are tackling. So thanks for being here. And thanks for thank having us. Updating yep. everybody. Thanks, thanks for, for having us. us. Okay. I wonder who came up with the name United Way. Even though the roots of the organization extend 125 years, the name was created in 1963, 53 years ago. I like the name a lot. Two words that are very powerful and even stronger when placed together. United, meaning all together. United is in our country's name, United States of America. From our constitutional preamble, United is defined as we the people. Today, we don't feel very united in this country. Maybe that's why the word is important. It reminds us of what we could and should be. Now let's look at the word way. The way is the path, the direction, the journey. It combines the concept of goal and process together. It implies there is a correct route and a correct place to move toward. Back to the good old U.S. of A., some might say we have lost our way. There appears to be a hundred ways, and everyone thinks theirs is the right one. Let's combine the two, United Way. 
It means we must work together to get on a path that is beneficial to all. We must combine our efforts. First, we listen to each other and understand the hopes, aspirations, fears, and barriers which we face. Once we grasp our mutual concerns and comprehend our shared goals, we can work as a whole to determine our way. Maybe the people of our country need to take a tip from our friends at the United Way and learn how the U.S. can have a united way. We hope our show and my comments at the end challenged you and informed you in some way. At Lakeshore Public Media, we value our viewers and listeners. We want to hear your thoughts and comments. Send them to our email address or contact us through our website. Both are listed on your screen. Remember, you can view previous Lakeshore Focus shows from the website. There's a lot of great content which, is, which you may have missed. When you have a few minutes, rather than play that stupid game, check your Facebook or watch some silly video for the hundredth time, enter www.lakeshorepublicmedia.org and check out a past show. Be sure and join us again next week for another Lakeshore Focus. Until then, I'm Keith Kirkpatrick saying, make a positive difference in our world today. Programming is supported by NIPSCO. Today's young minds are constantly reimagining what our world will be like tomorrow. That's why NIPSCO is upgrading its infrastructure now, so we're ready for whatever comes next. More information at nipsco.com future.